proudly we hail... City, where the American stage begins, here is another program of the cast of Outstanding Players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, Conquered the Future. Proudly we hail the missile men of the United States Air Force, the men who have, in reality, conquered the future. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but first... High potential. What do those two words mean to you, to a young man concerned with his future? Well, they can mean success in his chosen field, because the young man with the high potential in today's specialized world is the one with specialized training. Now, you can get that training as an airman in the United States Air Force. Today, Air Force schools all over America are graduating skilled specialists in literally hundreds of jobs. Previously unskilled men are now highly qualified X-ray technicians, aircraft repairmen, and intelligence specialists. And these are only a few of the wonderful assignments open to ambitious young men. There's a job to suit every aptitude and interest. So if you're of military age, well, now is the time for you to decide on your future. And your Air Force offers some of the finest specialized training to be found anywhere. Yes, the young man with the high potential for success is the one with the good training. So start building your future today by becoming an airman in the United States Air Force. The friendly people at your local Air Force recruiting station will be only too glad to talk it over with you and give you complete information so... See them soon. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Conquered the Future. The Matador guided missile has been added to the long line of perfected weapons developed by the U.S. Air Force to assist in the defense of the nation from enemy attack. But although no pilot guides this deadly craft to a pinpoint target, hundreds of men, skilled technicians, are needed to get the matador into the air and then to read the complicated instruments which tell where the missile is going. Maneuvering the dials with a delicate touch, guiding it to its destinations, and finally pushing the magic button when the target is reached. These men are trained for their jobs at Air Force schools, trained in electronics, mathematics, mechanics, and other sciences to do a job in which one mistake could cause death or injury to hundreds or thousands of innocent people. The courses are stiff, but the results are worthwhile. Ours is the Tactical Missile Squadron. And Tactical Missile Squadrons are divided into four sections. The Assembly and Checkout Section, Maintenance, Launching and Guidance. One important as the other and indispensable to the squadron operation. The missiles are received at the assembly point, crated, and here they are put together and checked out. Now, this may sound like a routine job, but it is important to remember the Matador is not a bomb. It more nearly resembles a fighter plane and is powered by a turbojet engine. It has nearly as many moving parts as any aircraft, sometimes more after special recording equipment has been installed for test runs. Well, assembly and checkout is my section. We keep a pretty tight schedule, even under normal conditions, but somehow conditions are never quite normal. But let's hear the story of one of my men who, as they say, fly the matador. I was at my desk one morning. Assembly, Captain Davis. Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, I do. Uh, no, sir, I haven't received that yet. I see. I see, yes, I think it can be worked out, Colonel. Yes, right. Is Sergeant Stevens in the shop? All right. Uh, no, don't call him to the phone. Ask him to come over to the office right away. That's right, thanks. Stevens arrived at the office a few minutes later. He'd only been with us a few months, but when my assembly chief left, he had recommended him as his replacement. 
I had interviewed Bill Stevens at that time, and although he was young and relatively inexperienced, he certainly seemed to know what he was doing, so I gave him the job. It remained to be seen what he would do with the assignment I was about to give him. You sent for me, sir? Uh, yes, sit down, Stevens. Thank you, sir. I just got a telephone call from Colonel Burns. Uh, you're aware, of course, that we're scheduled to move from our temporary quarters to the new assembly hangar at the end of this month? Yes, sir. Well, we have a plan here that was prepared in anticipation of this move. I'd like you to go over that with me a little later and uh, see if there are any suggestions you'd care to make. All right, sir. Now, in addition to this move, Colonel Burns has uh, just informed me that these tests which are scheduled for the first part of next month are going to require some brand-new telemetering equipment installed in the missile. Uh -huh, I see, sir. Yes. Now, I uh, haven't received anything official on this as yet. Uh, Colonel Burns says it's coming through now, and he'll send it along. But from what he says, it's going to require a highly experienced crew and will add considerable time to the normal assembly procedure. I see, sir. Now, the colonel wanted to know whether we wanted to postpone the move until after the tests, and I told him I didn't think so, that we could handle both jobs. Uh -huh. I think we can, sir. We'll make much better time than you hangers, sir. Floor plan is so much better arranged, we'll have so much more space. Uh -huh. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. And you report back here this afternoon after chow, and we'll go over those plans. And by that time, we should have some data on this new equipment as well. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, Stevens, uh, do you have any plans for this evening? Uh, no, sir. Well, you've been working rather hard. Uh, there's a dance in town at the high school for the airmen here at Patrick. Why don't you... Uh... Doris? This is Bill Stevens. Bill Doris Young. Oh, how do you do? Nice to know you, Bill. Doris is just your speed, Bill. Brainy. Oh, yeah, she's a teacher. <laughs> Imagine this cute number of teachers. Huh? <laughs> Only fourth grade. I'm bigger than they are. Now, Bill's the one I was telling you about, Doris. Real smart. Oh. Now, if you two will excuse me, I'll go get us all some punch. Um, I... What do you think of our Florida weather? Oh, I like it. It's warm. Yes, Yes, it is warm. It's nice, though. You like teaching? Oh, yes, yes, it's interesting. Uh, I guess it would be. Do you like your work? Oh, gee, yes. It's just fascinating to... Uh, I mean... Yes? Well, I'm sorry. The trouble is that we don't get a chance to talk shop much. Oh. Uh, do you have any hobbies? No, not exactly. Uh, unless you call fishing a hobby. Oh, of course. Uh, do you like fishing? Living here in Florida all my life, of course I do. Of course, it's most likely quite different where you come from. Well, I've never done any ocean fishing at all. I've been too busy since I've been here, and to tell you the truth, this is the first time in my life I've ever seen an ocean. Really? Imagine that. Uh -huh. Sure like to try some deep sea fishing on my next leave, though. Would you? My brother has a boat, a charter boat. Oh, gee, that's nice. Oh, I could never afford... I mean... Um, uh, I... That is, he, he wouldn't mind if I brought someone along sometime. Gee. Well, sometime... I mean, maybe... Uh... I'd love to have you come. That's great. Well, I'll, I'll let you know. Of course, it'll be a little while yet before I can go. Well, you just tell me when you can, and I'll call Ralph. That's my brother, so he won't get another charter. And we'll introduce you to fishing as it ought to be. Oh, morning, Captain Davis. Anything special you want to see, sir? Uh, how are those telemetering devices doing? Giving you a lot of trouble? Well, Sergeant Stevens is working on them, sir. He never seems to stop. He's over there in back if you want to talk to him, sir. Oh, yes, I see him. Thanks. Stevens, how are you coming along? They tell me you've got everything rolling anyhow. Yeah, just about. Oh, it's you, Captain. Yes, some job. What did you say, sir? I said you're doing a fine job. Oh, well, thank you, sir. You think we'll get under the wire? Yes, sir, I think so. Okay, stick with it. Personal example of what Stevens was setting had injected an enthusiasm into the section such as I had never seen before. Of course, everyone was anxious to make the move. We've been operating for a long time in inadequate space. But the extra work involved was tremendous, and this in itself often acts as a dampener of enthusiasm. However, in this case, it was the reverse. 
Several times the men worked 16 hour shifts to complete the operation and only quit when I ordered them off the job. But no matter how long the others worked, Stevens was always there a little longer. I told him what I thought of him, and he said to me... Oh, come on, forget it. There's a good movie on at the base theater. Come on, let's go. Anyone see Bill Stevens? Yeah, over in his bunk. Asleep? And all his racket? He came in with the rest of us after work. Been sleeping ever since. Bill, Bill. Hey, Bill, wake up. Huh? Oh, what's the matter? What's the matter with you? Six o'clock on a Friday night and you're sleeping? Oh, gee, I just dropped off. Yeah, you're working too hard. Listen, though, I got something hot. The squadron's been transferred to TAC. Tactical Air Command? Yeah. Hey, that's great. Yeah, you're darn right. Think of what it means. It means that the Matador is out of the experimental phase. We're a combat outfit now. That's right. You think we'll be transferred? Not right away, anyhow. We're going to be right here with the Missile Test Center. Uh Uh-huh, I see. And that way we'll be getting the benefit from the test being conducted here. We'll probably hold our launching in conjunction with the tests. Right. Oh, that's great. Hey, hey, fellas. Did you hear that? What? We've been transferred to TAC. Transfer to Tactical Air Command was well planned. With the squadron holding their launchings from Cape Carnivoral, the result was an economical and efficient operation. Progressive refinements on squadron techniques were to be merged into a finely integrated weapons system. The Matador was on its way as a tactical weapon. You are listening to the proudly we hailed production, Conquered the Future. And we will return to our second act in just one moment. Are you a service veteran? Well, if you are, then listen real carefully, because this message is just for you. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will surprise even you, if you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong. The Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your skill to work and at a higher grade and higher pay than you may realize. The Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in the armed forces. And now, thanks to the new Career Incentive Act, you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage by returning to the armed forces as a member of the Air Force team. You write or visit your Air Force recruiter for special prior serviceman's folder. It's full of important details. You'll see why. Today and tomorrow, you're much better off in the United States Air Force. You're listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we return to Act Two of Conquered the Future. The pressure was really on now. We all had a job to do and we knew it. I was glad, though, when I heard that Bill was planning to go to another high school dance. He needed to relax. Nice seeing you again. Oh, it's nice seeing you again, Miss Young. Uh, my first name is Doris, if you'd like to. Oh, yes, I would, Doris. Mine's Bill. I enjoyed talking to you last time you were here. I, I guess I talked too much. No, no, it was very interesting. I love fishing. It's so unusual for a girl. I mean, uh, oh, would you care for some punch? Oh, yes, that'd be wonderful. Gee, that was when you should have asked to see her home. Oh, I never thought of it. You didn't think. You didn't think. Some other guy's gonna beat your time if you don't start thinking. Yeah, but we hardly know each other. Yeah, at this rate, you never will. You get her out on the terrace, real romantic-like, and what do you do? Start talking about some old fish that got away. He didn't get away. That was the point. Huh? Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Hey, I, I did make a date with her. A date for what? To go fishing. Fishing? But, gee, she likes to fish. I can get a pass the end of next week, I think. So we're going out with her brother, fishing. Well, it's something. But, oh, I don't know. Fishing. <laughs> Uh, Stevens, uh, come in. I want to talk to you about something. Yes, sir. I've been over the week's reports since we've completed the installation of these telemetering devices. Uh, also, I understand that today is our first official day in the new shop. Yeah, that's right, sir. Mm-hmm. And we've made our deadline and better. Well, everyone seemed to understand how important it was. And they all sure pitched in. Well, it was a fine job. 
And I want to give you full credit for your part in it. Oh, thank you, sir. Now I have another project for you. Uh, do you think Finley can take over for you for a few weeks? Oh, I think so, sir. Good. The guidance section is very short-handed for the installation of some new equipment. I think it'll be a good opportunity for whoever gets the assignment. So I told them I'd send over one of the best technicians I've got. Yes, sir. That's you, Sergeant Stevens. Me, sir? Well, thanks. That's right. You are to report to guidance tomorrow morning. They'll uh, have some orders for you. I hope I'll be able to make good your recommendation. Well, I'm not a bit worried. Where is the equipment to be installed, sir, if I may ask? Grand Bahama Island. That's a short hop from here. Hey, that's wonderful. Uh, that is... Something wrong? I sort of thought you'd like it. I, I do, sir. I, I've been anxious to see this set up on one of the downrange bases, but uh, uh, I, I just never dreamed I'd be able to go. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, the launchings will be starting in about ten days from now. You'll still be there then, so maybe you'll have a chance to get in on the picture from the other end for a change. See what happens to the missiles we fire. Uh-huh. That would be terrific. Um... You understand the security regulations on this now? Sir? With the firings coming up, they tighten up on everything, of course, and uh, your trip down there can't be divulged to unauthorized personnel. Of course, you haven't a family here, so you have no problem on that score. Uh, no, no, sir. Well, good luck. Thank you, sir. Dick? Yeah? Hey, Dick, come here. Oh, Bill. Uh, sure, I'm glad I ran into you. I I've got some news, and I've got a problem. Yeah? I'm going to Grand Bahama in the morning. Grand Bahama? What for? I'm loaned to guidance temporarily. I'm going down to install some new tracking equipment. Oh. How long have you been gone? Uh, I, I guess about two weeks. The captain said I'd be there for the tests. Gee, that's great. Yeah. Um, well, what's wrong? You got a grandstand seat in the biggest show? Yeah, 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 but uh, this is the weekend that I had that date with Doris to go fishing. Well, call her up and tell her you're going away and make it for later in the month. That's just it, I can't. Captain says I can't tell any unauthorized person I'm going. Oh, no kidding. That makes it more complicated, huh? Uh, yeah. If I just tell her I can't make it, she'll probably think I don't want to go. She'll get sore. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. But you'll just have to try anyhow. Oh, she's not the kind that'll take it the wrong way. Oh, gee, Doris, I, I've been looking all over for you. I, I've got to talk to you. If it's about Bill, I don't want to hear but it. But I've got to explain. It, it won't take very long. All right. No matter what you say, I'm not going to change my mind. Well, okay, but, but j just, just listen. He, uh, he, he's got cold feet. You see, he's in love with you. Oh, yes, he's so much in love with me that I haven't seen him in over a week. Well, that's just it, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he, he, he wants to marry you. And, and, and he's afraid that you, you don't like him. Yeah. And, uh, well, he, he doesn't want to see you anymore because it makes him feel so bad that you might not feel the same way he does. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Why on earth doesn't he ask me how I feel? Oh, oh well, he, he can't. He, it, it, well, it, it would make him feel too bad if you, if you turned him down. But I wouldn't. I mean... You, you, you wouldn't? No. That is, if he asked me. Dick. What? Dick, something awful has happened. You've got to help me. Well, sure, sure. What? I wrote a letter. A, a letter? Yes. I was so mad when he broke our date. Well, well not mad, but... Well, I guess I thought didn't think he could be very interested, so so I wrote him and told him I was glad he couldn't come because I I told him I was going to marry somebody else. Oh, gee, what did you do that for? I don't know, but the important thing is he mustn't get that letter. Oh, gee, I don't know how. Oh, gosh, you see each other every day. Don't you get your mail together? Well, sometimes. Just make it a point to go with him. Tell him anything. Just tell him it was a letter I wrote to a girlfriend and I got it in the wrong envelope. Well, I don't oh, know. you've got to do it. It is midnight. Early morning firings are the preferred ones at Cape Canaveral. The weather at the impact site is better. As a result, work has begun at midnight by the men of the launching and guidance sections. And often, they work around the clock. Hi, Davis. 
What are you doing up this hour of the night? This is sort of out of your line, isn't it? Yeah, sort of. I'm an observer. Got some new gimmicks on the series, and we had a slight flap getting them installed, so uh, I thought I'd come around and take a look. Well, there's plenty to look at. Yes, there is, there is. This is Central Control. Central Control calling Clambake 2. Come in, Clambake 2. Clambake 2, here. How do you read me? Five by. How about you? Only about three by. How's that? Loud and clear. What was the trouble? All bad cord. I'll use another pair. Right. Here I am, talking to Grand Bahama. If only I can get through to Bill. Everything I think of gets things more mixed up, but this one might just be the one to unmix them. Uh, Captain Davis. Yes, Sergeant? Are you, uh, busy, sir? There's something I'd like to ask you about. Well, what is it? Well, sir, it's, uh, it's about Sergeant Stevens. Bill Stevens. Mm-hmm. Well, go ahead. We've got a few minutes yet. He told me the whole story, and I promised that I'd think about what I might do. And I went back to work again. The sergeant had a problem, all right. But by that time, the preparations were in full swing, and there was nothing I could do about solving it for the moment. Through the periscope in the blockhouse, the matadors are visible. This time, there were three of them. Noses pointing skyward to where the first rocket thrust would shoot them. Until they would level off as the turbojets took hold. The matador is painted a brilliant red for easy visibility. It's not for artistic reasons they get their scarlet coats. But as they stand silhouetted against the first rosy rays of dawn, the brilliant blue sky behind them and the white sand and concrete beneath, they make an inspiring and colorful sight. The time is X minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, At the end of the countdown, this one. is it. Gating, check with the chase plane right away. Yes, sir. Central control to Crosby 1. Central control to Crosby 1. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Come in, Crosby six, One. Five. Come in, Crosby four, One. Crosby three, One here. Two, We're on her tail. Everything's one. okay. Over. Right, sir. Get it? Yes, sir. I think Crosby Two's coming in now, sir. Okay. Yes, Crosby. Come in, Crosby Two. We're right there, Sergeant. Ten. Over. Nine, Roger. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Two of them off. One, one to go. Each matador has a different target. Each is tracked carefully to it and then finally pointed into the sea and destroyed. Today, the matador and the men who, yes, fly it have been placed in the defense service of the nation as an integrated weapons system. The future is conquered and will continue to be. Uh, there was one more piece of business on the morning's agenda, at least for Sergeant Keating and me. Uh, Sergeant Keating, if you're not too busy now, will you get me Clambake 2 on the line? Yes, sir. Clambake 2, come in, please. Sergeant Bill Stevens. Sorry to be so long getting to the control room. I was in another area. Uh, this is Captain Davis, Sergeant. Oh, yes, sir? I want you to listen carefully. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, Sergeant, uh, uh, there are times in the man's life... Captain when... Davis, huh? sir, the letter. It, it didn't get mailed. Returned. No stamp. Wait a minute. Just a moment, Sergeant. I'll be able to talk to you later. Uh, uh, never mind, Bill. Thanks. I I'll uh, see you when you get in here. Uh, yes, right. Well, Keating, what the devil now? She gave it to her little brother, and he got so interested in the stamp that he kept it for his collection and dumped the envelope into the mailbox without it. <laughs> Phew, what a relief. 
Oh, sir, I... I don't know how to thank you, anyway. That's all right, Sergeant. That's a pretty good man who wants to help a buddy out as much as you did. You know, Sergeant, I, uh... I think we might help things along if uh, we had that Miss Young here the morning he comes in and reports to me. But you catch him before and do a little orientation, hmm? Yes, well, she'll be there. That'll be easy after what I've been struggling over. Well, everything worked out perfectly, sir. Yes, it did. Uh, I mean, good, uh... Uh, we'll go into that in a minute. Uh, now, first, I have a little news. I recommended you for another stripe, and I just got word on it. You'd better get over to a tailor right away and get it sewn on. Oh, uh-huh. yes, sir. Uh, seems to me a technical sergeant ought to be able to support a wife in pretty good style. If he had a wife, sir. Well, uh, Sergeant Keating tells me if a fellow was to ask the question, he could be pretty sure of an affirmative answer. Mm-hmm. That's what he told me, too, sir. Yes, well, uh, if you'd step into the next office, I think you might find the girl. Doris? That's right. Yes, sir. Let me know how it all comes out, hmm? Yes, sir. power is peace power. And today, the United States Air Force is seeking alert and ambitious young men to become airmen and help safeguard the peace of our country. While serving their country, today's airmen are attending the world's finest specialized schools. There, they're learning such interesting and rewarding skills as photo mapping, guided missiles, aircraft, electronics, and, well, gee, many, many others. And upon graduation, They're highly skilled specialists, ready for interesting and good-paying assignments in the United States and in many fascinating countries around the world. So if you're a young man of service age, well, then you owe it to yourself to investigate the amazing career opportunities open to you as an airman. And in addition to an outstanding career, well, you'll enjoy educational and travel benefits that are second to none. You'll wear the smartly styled Blue Air Force uniform, and you'll enjoy the respect and prestige that goes with being a member of the world's finest Air Force. Visit your local Air Force recruiting station, talk it over with the friendly people there. They'll tell you how you can qualify as an airman in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Dick Herbert speaking, and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>